Welcome to today's 3D print. Time for a what's up? What am I working on? What's going on? I want to keep you guys in the loop about what I'm doing with the channel, full transparency, all that. Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, my. I don't know exactly how this thing with GearBest works. The guy who contacted me, I don't know if he actually works for GearBest or if he works on a commission kind of basis where he's given an allotment and he goes out and finds people to send stuff to on eBay and then the more people he finds that successfully result in sales, he gets commission or is he actually an employee at GearBest? I don't know. But, um, I think he's a little crazy. <laughs> in a good way. In a good way. But, um, if I'm understanding his messages correctly, they're slightly concerning. Because, if I'm understanding them correctly, he's sending me four printers. Holy crap. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the idea of getting four printers, but that's a lot of printers. And they're not cheap ones either. They're, they're going to be great for the channel. They're all very popular, very good printers. Um, I'm going to be getting a CR-10S, so I'll be able to show you guys the new upgraded CR-10 with the dual Z and the filament filter thingy and all that stuff. Um, a CR-10S4, which is fantastic. Um, I was tempted to tell him to just keep the commissions I've already gotten from you and give me an S5, but I figured just leave it alone, don't mess with it. I'm also going to be getting, um, it's not out yet, but I'll be getting a new CR10 Mini, which is one I actually requested because I know that's going to be very popular with a lot of people who either don't want the full-on CR10 or don't have the room for a CR10 because it is a very large printer. The CR10 Mini is 300 by 300 by 200. Um, it's actually not too far off from the dimensions of the E10, except it's going to be 300 tall, 300 long, and 200 wide. So um, that's interesting. And I got the all metal one. At least the one he linked me and showed me is the all metal one. Um, they have two versions apparently. One is partially acrylic on um, the base and one is all metal, so it looks like a CR-10, but it's smaller. So I'm glad they're doing the all metal one, because I'm like, I'm not a fan of acrylic. <laughs> I mean, I'm okay with it in some cases for non-structural parts, but I would prefer all metal. Um, and also, um, this is the interesting one, a TiVo Tornado. That's actually one I'm intrigued by because it's the first direct clone of the CR-10. Um, not an OEM, so it's not like the Hicktop CR-10, which is actually a Creality CR-10 that Hicktop is selling. I mean, Hicktop doesn't make it. It's, there, there is no difference between a Hicktop CR-10 and a Creality CR-10. They're both Creality CR-10s, it's just one has a Hicktop label. They're the same printer. Same with the Enders. The Hicktop Ender 2 and the Creality Ender are exactly the same. It is the same printer. It comes from the same factory. They're both made by Creality. The TiVo Tornado, on the other hand, is not. It is a clone. So um, it is. it looks virtually identical to the CR-10, but it is actually made by TiVo, not Creality. It's not an OEM. So that will be interesting. I mean, we've seen lookalikes of the CR-10, but not an actual direct clone. Meaning same V rails, same 300, 300, 400, or yeah, 300, 300, 400, same um, V slot wheels and stuff like that. So that will be interesting. There are some things that I saw in the TiVo Tornado that I like. TiVo has an advantage over Creality in that they are coming second. So they can see some of the shortcomings of the Creality printer and they can correct them. So it will be interesting to see whether TiVo can execute because. If you look at something like the ANET E10, which is not a bad printer at its core, but it's got some quality control issues and some poor decisions, we will see if TiVo makes poor decisions in executing. If they do a good job, they can ride the coattail of the CR10 and maybe slightly improve it, or they'll crash and burn. <laughs> so we'll see. I'll be putting them right next to each other and we'll see. We'll see. 
and uh, hopefully you guys will be the first to know whether it's a crash and burn or whether it's a hey, it's not bad. We'll see. I also have my Kickstarter uh, model price printer coming in this month. Sometime in September, I should be getting it. The um, the, the Mini Delta. I I did their Kickstarter for that when they put it out there for the 159 price or something like that. So I will be getting that shortly. And so that will be fun. I also got the first of nine of the Enders for the Amazon Returns. You know, I haven't even opened it yet. I don't have time. Um, I'll fall asleep here waiting for the, to upload the first video. <laughs> so um, on probably Tuesday, I will tear into this and we will... The first one. And it says FBA. Yeah. Hmm. Looks like South Carolina. It came UPS. So that is the first of nine. I will pull that out of there on um, Tuesday, and we will see what kind of condition it's in. You know, if what if anything is wrong with it, I'm still pretty confident there's probably nothing wrong with it unless the end user broke it. Um, most of the time, this kind of stuff gets returned because the end user got in over their head. They realize, okay, it's not a Star Trek replicator. Send it back. <laughs> when they realize they actually have to do some work. Um, a little quick print. I uh, got a really, really nice print of that, the cute octopus with the SD card holder slots. They even put a little micro SD card holder slot in his hand. I thought that was so adorable. Um, even the Ender had a little trouble with this one. Not, not trouble. I mean, it printed fine, but it's not perfect like I'm used to. Right here, you can see it there. See? It's not perfect. And I'm wondering why. I wonder if there's something in the model, or... I don't know. I even did, I even did this one at 0.12 layer height, because the 0.2 layer height... Well, I guess it's about the same, really. You can see the little imperfections. I'm not used to that. Usually, the, uh, usually anything I throw at the ender comes out ridiculously good. So, I mean, I know it's still fine, because I just printed one of my um, motor retainers, and it's as perfect as always, so it's something with this model. Um, I don't know, it looks fine in the slicer. I mean, try, don't get me wrong, this is a ridiculously nice print. I'm just used to the over-the-top perfect that I usually get from the Enders, you know, like the, like, like the Benchy, you know. I'm used to the over-the-top perfect. Um, don't forget to check out my video on the, the High Five Blue. This stuff is stupidly cool. Stupidly expensive, <laughs> but stupidly cool. <laughs> um, interesting note, every single one of the SD card readers, except this one, that I've gotten with my printers is dead. Um, the, the two Ender ones I've used, and the two CR10 ones I've used, and the... Um, um, and then this is the fifth one. They're all dead. They don't work. I can't copy files to them properly. It's yellow or whatever. It's cheap Chinese junk. You probably literally found the cheapest SD card reader they could find. Toss it in the box. <laughs> but um, every one of them is dead. Except that one. Thankfully, I've got plenty of readers. I got the Zone Star Z5F working properly, and it actually seems to be working pretty good now. I mean, it's not. It's nothing to write home about. It's not no CR10 or Ender or anything like that. But um. It's, it works fine. The, it turned out it was bad stepper. I mean, uh, that, that's a give me. I'm, I'm not really going to punish a manufacturer for that unless they all show up with bad steppers because it worked fine for the first 40 hours of printing, 50 hours of printing, you know, whatever number of hours of printing I did. Um, even my Wanhow, same thing. Extruder stepper died after you know, 100 hours of printing, it died, and I had to replace it with a new one. So I actually replaced it with the same one that I put on the um, the Maker Select, the one that I always, the one I link to in my Maker Select video, you know, $13.99. And same thing, I had to swap the center two wires. Works fine. Um, I have the reinforcements installed. The brackets to reinforce the, to connect the two aluminum extrusions that the, the dumb dumb engineers at Zone Star said, hey, everybody's using V rail extrusions. Let's use V rail extrusion. And then they, Let's make the acrylic a structural component of it. So why bother going with beautiful, gorgeous, super strong aluminum V-rail if it's all going to be connected to acrylic and not to each other, so it's all going to wiggle around? <laughs> that was really dumb. 
is a, is a cheap and easy fix. You just need some M4, M5, 8mm bolts and some corner brackets and some hammer nuts. Problem solved. That should have been done from the factory. Okay? The Zone Star Post Extrusion fee should have been included. They probably cost you a nickel a piece in China. Alright? And all you need is six of them. All right, you toss six of these in the bag. You could probably get away with four. But toss six of these in the bag with the appropriate bolts and reinforce the damn thing. That's inexcusable. You should. Like I said, a couple years ago, this printer would have gotten blazing marks from me because this printer is printing out pretty nicely. Um, the one issue I'm having, I'll get to when I review this printer, is that there's a there's a low frequency vibration when the um, bed and arms move, and that causes a consistent, constant, very fine but consistent and constant noise, ghosting, ringing, whatever you call it. It's um. I don't even think it's ringing or ghosting. I think it's just noise. I think that the head is moving along and either the stepper or the pulleys or something, you, you can put your hand on it, you can feel it. Whenever the Y bed moves back and forth, it actually vibrates like a vibrator. Um, and that vibration is being introduced into the print. So you end up with a constant level of it looks like a Moray pattern on the camera here. But you end up, I mean, the print's nice, the print's smooth, but it's got that, that um, pattern, that, that noise in the surface of the model all throughout it. And, it's, and you can actually feel it. I put my hand on the bed, and every time the bed moves backwards, you can feel it. Let's see if it does going forward, or is it just backwards? Yep, both directions. So I don't know if that's the an alignment issue with the wheels, or if that's the stepper motor drivers. I, I, this printer is unusually quiet. I mean, it's really quiet. It's almost as quiet as the Ender. Maybe even... It's... I think it's ultimately slightly louder than the Ender, but it's at a lower frequency, so it comes across as quieter. It's less um, noticeable because it's a lower frequency. And... Um, so some people would say it's quieter because of that, um, but I think the actual decibel level is slightly higher, but the frequency is lower. We notice the high pitch sound in this more. I wonder if whatever they're doing with their stepper drivers to drive the motors the way they are, because I think it must be the actual stepper. See, I don't feel it. No, I feel it a little bit on the X too, but not when I touch the steppers. When I put my hand on the the shroud fan. I wonder what would happen if... See, I don't want to screw up this print. Let me touch the stepper in the back. No, see, I don't... I don't feel the vibration when I touch the stepper. I feel the vibration when I have my hand on the bed. So that leads me to believe it's either the pulley belt or the V-wheels or a combination of them. Maybe something's not aligned right so that when it's rolling it's jittering a little bit or something. I don't know, but that vibration is coming from somewhere, and it's a, it's a definite, you can feel it, it's a definite vibration. Um, might even be unique to this particular iteration of the printer, maybe if you got another one, maybe you wouldn't do it. It does not ruin the prints, it just, it adds a, a pattern to the surface, and I'm really curious as to what that is. Um, so this channel is going to be very, 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 very busy for the next couple of months. <laughs> I got a lot of printers to build, a lot of testing to run because I don't just do, I don't build a printer, print something and say here's my review. That's just not how I work. Um, the way I see it, I want to either suggest to you to buy a printer or warn you away from not buying it. <laughs> and to do that, I actually have to use it. So you'll notice I still don't have a final review for the CR10 or the Ender, although the Ender's coming soon. Um, or the E10, oh that one's coming soon too, because I want to actually use them significantly, dramatically, for an extended period of time, put them through their paces, do all kinds of different prints for them, and most important, put a lot of hours on them. Make sure they hold up. Make sure there's no core issue that's going to, the board fails after 500 hours of printing or something like that. You know, make sure there's no problem down the road for you guys. Because, you know, I do a lot of printing, as you see. <laughs> so. Um, I'm in a 
ideal position to basically do accelerated wear and tear on a printer. I run them so much, so continuously. I mean, even the Z5F is running 24-7. It's just, I come home, I start a print. I get up in the morning, I start a print. I come home, I start a print, if it's not already still going. So it just, it runs continuously. Now that I got the stepper fixed, I'm going to put a big project on the Z5F. I want to try to get something over 40 or 50 hours of print time, just to abuse it a little bit, to see how it handles just cranking away non-stop. And see how the electronics hold up, how the motors hold up, how the printer itself holds up, does it hold its tune, does, it loose, does anything loosen up after printing that many hours, all that stuff, you know, that's important. I'm hoping that that is why you guys would enjoy my videos, because I try to give you that information, which I think would be valuable. That's what I would look for when I go looking for information on a printer. I want to know, is it going to give me two months of service or two years of service? weird little mist extrusion or something like I see a, a wisp inside the vase but it's a vase so how can I have a wisp inside it should never leave the perimeter hmm. I'll have to look into that I see two two little wisps almost like um it was printing around and, and it didn't quite attach and a piece came off I don't know I'll look at it later might just be um splooge left on the nozzle that happened to grab at that point and got strung out like cotton candy. I want to try that by the way. I just watched a video of a guy making hand dragon's beard cotton candy. I really want to try that. I'd like stuff like that's cool. Um, Luby released a new model. Squizzle the Squirrel, I think she called it. Um, I printed them this big. <laughs> Full height of the CR10 in the gold silk component. So my next mega print episode, which will be in a few days, probably Wednesday, it got delayed because of the power outage which took out four of my prints. And that lady I showed you before, or the guy, or lady, whoever, I don't know who was in the car when it hit the pole. But um so I had to restart some of those prints. They're coming along nicely. Ruby also did a swan, it's one of her older models, and I realized I've got the white silk. Of course, I'm going to do the swan in white silk. I need your guys' help, though, because... Do I have it handy? No, it's over there. Um, 3D Sciatech came out with a new ultra silk color. And um, I bought a roll, of course. It's a new color. I must have it. Must have it! Can't not have it. Uh, purple. So, purple silk. So, I need your guys' suggestions on something to print in the purple silk. Maybe the DG Aquaticus Dragon? That might look cool in a purple silk. But what do you guys think? What would you like to see? Something, I want something that's nice. Something like the Squirrel, something like the Sorceress, something like Drogon, Adelinda, um, Aria, you know, the Swan, the Owl, something, something nice to look at that would look very pretty in an Ultra PLA. Not just, you know, I don't want to just do a vase. Unless it's a truly, really, really cool vase, I don't want to just do something simple. I want to do something really cool that I can really mega-size and make nice in that Ultra PLA. So um, if you guys have any suggestions for something you would like to see, let me know down below. Um, what else? So I started printing these. I got a couple of different types of things to try out, but um, this is a, a little holder designed to hold those uh, super, super sharp, thin, double-edged safety razors. And the idea behind this is that it is so thin and so stupidly razor sharp that with no need for pressure at all, it will simply slide underneath your prints without damaging your print or the print bed and without you having to which gets you that. Um, but, um, so I gotta order some, I can't, I can't find any safety razors in the store. I can find utility blades, I can find, you know, single-sided razor blades, but I can't find any of the old school, you know, like shave with old school bolt-in double-sided safety razors. Um, because the problem with utility blades and razor blades is that they have points. And those points can dig into your print bed. Now my print bed's a little more resistant to that because it's printed Z, so it's actually a it's a solid. It's not a 
it's not a soft material like um, build tag or something like that. It's it's almost like a stone kind of thing. When I when I scrape it with my knife, it, it scrapes like you know for mica or stone or something like that. Um, it's an actual solid, and um, so it's less it's more resistant to being damaged that way. But I'd still prefer not to damage it because you know like for example on the CR10 that's thirty one dollars and even though that's relatively cheap, it's still thirty one dollars. And um, so the safety razors have a softer corners so that they won't have that point to dig into the print surface. And um, so I printed out a couple different versions of these and I'll get the safety razors in and we'll try that out. And I also got a couple of uh, ones for the single sided razors and the utility knife because I think getting prints off is going to be a staging process. You start with a thin, which you can't really pry with because they're too thin, they're flexible, which is what makes them good for getting in there. So you get in there with a the thin one, then you go in there with a the thicker one to go in a little deeper and pry it up further, and then finally that gives you enough of a gap to then go in there with the... I can never find one when I need it. They're, they're, they're always hiding. You know, I have like seven of them, and they're always hiding exactly when I need them. But then you go in there with the putty knife. Um, I also want to look into getting a much, much larger putty knife, like a 10 inch putty knife, but I need something that's thinner spring steel. This is too thick. Some of my prints can be damaged if I try to jam this in there. And what happens is, um, for example, if I were to go pry this off, it's st sometimes it sticks so well that when I go in there and I, and I push it in there, because the print hasn't given yet, it actually crushes this corner of the print because it's forcing it up, which is where the advantage of safety razor will come in. It's thin enough that it can break that connection between the print bed and the print without compressing the print and damaging it. And um, Let's see, what else? Um, I plan to have a review eventually. I gotta do a lot of printing with it to see, but so far I love the way it prints. Uh, look how crazy smooth this is. This is Maker Geek's um, Raptor PLA. It's an annealable PLA. Supposedly, this will handle 245 degrees once correctly annealed. Okay, that'll handle a hot car. <laughs> I get over 100 C, I'm happy. So, we shall see. Um, the trick is, a lot of PLAs, matter of fact, most PLAs, even, you know, normal PLAs, you can anneal. Most people don't realize that. You can anneal most normal PLAs. The problem is they warp and shrink when you do that because you've literally got to bring them to 100 C. you got to take them past their glass transition point to do it. And my parts can't shrink because this part's got to thread into that part and this part's got to fit on the rocket and it's got to allow the rocket engine to fit in here. So I can't have shrinkage. With this to a point, I can actually put a paper tube in here, screw the parts together, put an engine in here and stick that whole thing in the oven, then maybe that'll keep it from shrinking, keep it the right size, but that's a pain in the butt. Um, this stuff is supposed to only shrink 0.5%, which is tolerable, I can live with that, I can just increase the size, you know, 0.1 millimeter, and that'll take care of the 0.5% the um, shrinkage, as long as it maintains its shape integrity, as long as it still comes out the same shape I put it in. Something like this, that shouldn't be a problem, because it's it's got structure from it being a curve, a parabolic parabola, and I've also got infill here and here to add structure, so this will probably hold its shape. Um, but something like this, I'm not as sure about. I don't know how much I can expect this to change shape if I kneel it, so I'm just going to have to test it. And, um, but, but even before it's, I've done anything to it, the smoothness on this is almost as good as the the Protopasta HDPLA V3. It's not as good. You can even see with a little bit down here, the HDPLA is smoother, but not by a lot. It's 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 pretty good. Um, let's see what else is coming up. Um, do you guys want me to? do video as I build these nine enders and test them out that I get? Do you want? It's all going to be the same thing over and over again, I've already posted two, but if you want it, I'll do it. I don't care, it's just video to me. Um, so let me know down below whether you want me to post a video of me building these new enders as I get them. Um, I can always do like a five minute unboxing of me just pulling it out and saying, oh, that's missing, or oh, that's broken, if there is anything, and then do a 
another short little video at the end saying, okay, it's all built, here it is working, and it's fine. Um, I can do that, or I can just let the camera run while I build each one. You guys let me know what you want. I'm fine either way with it. I mean, it doesn't add nothing to me. All I'm doing is sticking one of these on a tripod and hitting go. So, if, if, if you want that, let me know. I'll do that. Um, I will have the review for the Z5F, my initial thoughts review, not my full review. That'll take months for the Z5F soon. Um, I am not going to rate that printer a go buy it. I do not like that acrylic base, and I think there are better printers available at a similar price point. I mean, it, it is a pretty good price point for its print volume, and I do like the construction overall, but that acrylic bottom is a real bugger. And I have some slight discrepancies in the model that I don't know where they're coming from. So I don't know if that is an actual endemic problem with the QC control for the parts for the printer. They're minor, they're not big, but they're enough to annoy me. Um, and I think a lot of it might be related to whatever's causing that low frequency vibration. So um, I gotta see if I can figure out what is actually doing that. I wouldn't be surprised if it's the, um, the V wheels being mounted to the acrylic and it's already shifting. But no, it did it right from the very first print. The very first time I turned it on, I noticed that hum and that vibration. I mean, you put your hand on a bed, you can actually feel it. It feels like a, um, if you ever sat in one of those massage chairs or one of those massage wands that massages your muscles, it feels just like that, but a softer, lower frequency. And um, that would absolutely be what's causing the rippling. Not rippling, the, the, the noise in the skin of the model. So that'll be coming soon. Beyond that, it's cool. I love the fact that it's running Repetier, so I can change acceleration and jerk and then save it. Um, in the firmware, I can actually do that in the actual interface, which is cool. I like to be able, I like having the ability to do that. Um, the stiffeners seem to be working well. Um, I don't think there's anything else. Oh, I am. It looks like I am going to be. I'm going to make an attempt to go to the New York Maker Fair. I probably can't go for both days. It's a bit too expensive. We're talking forty bucks in tolls. And um, well, about about 60 bucks in tolls and gas round trip to go there, plus 25 bucks for parking, plus the 25 dollars to get into the actual Maker Fair. So it's like 130 bucks, but it's more than that. I also lose a day's pay. I work seven days a week typically. Um, so by going there, I'm also losing 100 bucks in pay. So the trip will actually cost me 230 dollars. So I'm probably only going to go for one day. I don't think I can afford the. $460 to go for two days, lost pay plus costs. So I will, if I go, I will be there Saturday. So if you guys want to meet me, look for the big gigantic orange guy. I'll be in all orange. <laughs> uh, although, no, actually, the shirt will be black because I got a today's 3D print shirt and hat. So orange pants. And I will see you guys later. Let me know down below what you think.